In this presentation, we're going to calculate the net present value in internal rate of return on a time series of cash inflows and outflows. So on the bottom here are the outflows, and here are the inflows. And we're going to discount these flows all back here to the, be in this case, it's beginning of year one. And it's going to be discounted here based on uh, uh, interest rate percent, and it would be like the cost of capital. So if we know what our cost of capital is or an interest rate percent, we can discount it, the net present value using that percentage. And if the net present value, it's a dollar amount here for the net present value, and the internal rate of return is as a percentage. So if the net present value is greater than zero, it adds value. And if it's less than zero, it subtracts value. So that's our return here on investment. Okay. Here we calculate the net present value uh, using an Excel function. So here's the Excel function. And we have to put in an interest rate that would be like the cost of capital. Put that in. And then the cash flows would be next here. Remember, the negative ones have to have a minus sign. I put brackets around them when I enter them. That, then they convert over into minus sign. And then the dates here. You can put any date you want. Month, date, year. It goes down here. Then that function calculates out the net present value. In this case, it is a plus amount here. So it's generating cash. Next, let's go up here to the internal rate of return. Again, using the same cash flows, same dates. Change the function here. And then here's the cash flows. Here's the dates. And then this interest rate, it's, they call it a guess amount. You can put anything you want in, but it, it'll generate whatever the internal rate of return is here based on those cash flows. Okay. Here we're just going to summarize our net present value here we calculated in Excel was $2177 and what that means is that the series of cash flows the inputs here and the outputs when you bring them back here that's what it generated 2100 that's what it's worth in today's uh, dollars $2177 and then if we go up here to the internal rate of return same thing at 41.8 percent uh, discounting those cash flows back, that's what this project could return, 41.8%. Sounds ridiculously high, but for that can be a plus two. Okay. Here we're going to look at the effect that interest rates has, have on the net present value. So we started out here with a 9% interest rate. That was $2,176 positive in net present value. And then we increase the interest rate here, say to 15%, and we reduce the net present value. It went down to $1,685. Makes sense because cost of capital or cost us more money to uh, generate those cash flows. And then going over here, we actually reduce the interest rate, and that increases the net present value. Makes sense again. Lower interest rate, greater net, pre um, net present value. Higher interest rate, lower net present value. And then you'll notice here that the internal rate of return doesn't change. It's whatever that those uh, series of cash flows are. It's, that's what they generate, 41.8 percent return. Sounds ridiculously high, but that's what it returned. So now let's go down here and get a relationship between the net present value and the internal rate of return. So here, if the, the interest rate, the cost of capital has increased, say, to 41%, then this um, net present value approaches zero. So that's really our tipping point there. If we have to pay 41% for interest, well, you're not going to make any money. So. But then again, on the positive side, if you're comparing projects here, this would be a low risk one because you got a lot of room for error. So you, know, you wouldn't be paying 41%. You'd be paying more like 
6, 8, or 10 percent. Now let's just look here. If this interest internal rate of return was say 10 percent, and and we had to and our net present value was based on like 8 percent, well then we'd have a positive flow. But if it were uh, costing us like instead of 10, it would be 12 or 15, then our net present value would uh, be in a minus figure. So it, this is critical here. The internal rate of return is based, they're interrelated here. So you can see the relationship. So this is just an overview of our um, net present value and how you calculate it and how you can use it comparing projects.